Hello my sweet friends, I am here with a chapter 3 reading from The Midwife's Apprentice. Um, like all the other chapters and like all the chapters to come, this is a short chapter, so this is going to be a fairly quick read. Um, here we go. Also, I have like weird grids on my screen right now for recording and I don't know what I did. But I hope they don't come out in the actual video, I guess we'll find out. So. Karen Cushman's The Midwife's Apprentice, Chapter 3. It's called The Midwife. I wonder who we're going to learn about. Her name was Jane. She was known in the village as Jane the Midwife because of her sharp nose and her sharp glance. Beetle always thought of her as Jane Sharp. Jane Sharp became a midwife because she'd given birth to six children, although none of them lived. Went Sundays to Mass and had strong hands and clean fingernails. She did her job with energy and some skill, but without care. Without care, as well as compassion or joy. She was the only midwife in the village, and taking Beetle gave her cheap labor and an apprentice too stupid and scared to be any competition. This suited the midwife. Beetle slept on the cottage floor and ate two meals a day of onions, turnips, dried apples, cheese, bread, and occasional bits of bacon. This suited Beetle. Now, the word suited, when someone says, oh, that suits me or that suited them, it means they, they really liked that. They were okay with that. Um, so the midwife, it suits her to have Beetle as her apprentice because she feels that there's no competition. She doesn't think that Beetle's going to become so good as to challenge her as being perhaps a midwife herself. And Beetle, the food that she's getting for the work that she's doing, and the place that she's now getting to sleep for the work she's doing, she's okay with that. So that suits her. And so Beetle remained the midwife's apprentice as spring drew near and the new green shoots appeared on the bare branches of shrubs and trees. And the villagers began plowing the muddy fields for the summer crops. Beetle sometimes feared Jane Sharp was a witch, for she mumbled to herself. And once a pail of milk curdled as she passed, but mostly she knew Jane was just what she first appeared, a woman neither young nor old, neither fat nor thin, with a sharp nose and a sharp glance and a wimple starched into sharp pleats. Remember what we said the other chapter, this is a wimple, okay? It's something that um, a lot of midwives would wear. Each morning, Beetle started the fire, blowing on the night's embers to encourage them to light the new day's scraps. She swept the cottage's dirt floor, sprinkled it with water and stamped it to keep it hard packed. She roasted the bacon and washed up the mugs and knives and sprinkled flea bane about to keep the fleas down. She dusted the shelves packed with jugs and flasks and leather bottles of dragon dung and, and mouse ears, frog liver and ashes of toad, snail jelly, borage leaves, nettle juice, and the powdered bark of the black alder tree. In the afternoon, Beetle left the village for the woods where she gathered honey, trapped birds, and collected herbs, leeches, and spider's webs and the cat went with her. When they were called, she accompanied the midwife to any cottage where a woman labored to birth her baby, provided that woman could pay a silver penny or a length of newly woven cloth or the best layer in the hen house. So it sounds like these people don't necessarily have to pay with money, they can pay with other goods as well. Beetle carried the basket with the clean linen, ragwort and columbine seeds to speed the birth, cobwebs for stanching blood, briny and woolly nightshade to cleanse and comfort the mother, goat's beard to bring forth her milk, and a sage tea for too much, jasper stone as a charm against misfortune, and a mistletoe and elder leaves against witches. So my goodness, she definitely has her hands full. She is responsible for bringing a lot of things to every birth. Beetle waited outside while the midwife did her magic within. The first time they were called to a cottage, Beetle tried to go in, but Jane slapped her calling her clodpole and shallow-brained whistler and made her stay outside where she wouldn't get in the way. Often she called Beetle in when it was over to clean out the soiled straw bed and to wash the linen, while Jane Sharp and the new mother sipped feverfew and nutmeg brewed in hot ale. And once she sent the girl back to the cottage to brew some black currant syrup to fight a new mother's fever. Beetle began to think perhaps she was kept out, not because she was stupid, but to keep her in ignorance of the midwife's skills and spells. And she was right. So the phrase keeping someone in ignorance, that means keeping them out of the loop, keeping them in the dark on something. In other words, the midwife doesn't want her to learn too much about her craft. Um, 
perhaps the midwife doesn't want her secrets revealed. She doesn't want Beetle to learn too much about what she does. Um, as the weather warmed and the villagers began digging long furrows in the field to take the seed, Beetle found herself doing more and more of the collecting and stewing and brewing, while Jane Sharp spent her time haggling over fees. In other words, deciding the prices that people would pay her for her services. Twice the midwife refused to come to laboring mothers who had nothing to pay. And so the unfortunate women had to bring forth their babies with none but a neighbor to help. The midwife's greed angered the villagers, but they needed her, and so took out their anger not on Jane Sharp, but on her apprentice, needed by no one. So in other words, people were frustrated with the midwife, but they would complain to Beetle about the midwife. So now Beetle is having to deal with all of these angry, frustrated people because they just are harboring all this frustration to her boss, which is the midwife. Beetle endured their anger and their taunts in silence and complained only to the cat, who listened and sometimes rubbed his head on her legs in sympathy. When spring arrived with soft breezes and meadows grown green, the villagers began sowing early peas and barley, followed by the village boys who threw stones at the hungry birds trying to eat the seed. Ugh, Jack and Watt threw stones too at Beetle and the cat who followed her, which made the villagers laugh. Okay. Remember in the last chapter, I said, these boys need to be spoken to because they are not very nice. And now it sounds like the villagers, they just encourage their behavior because they're laughing at the things that they do, which is horrible. Beetle was only the midwife's stupid apprentice and no care to them, which is awful. She's obviously not stupid. She's obviously worthy of people to care for her, but she is not seeing it that way. One morning, not too long after May Day, Kate, the weaver's daughter, lay down in the field and declared her baby was coming right there and right then. Her father, Robert Weaver, and her husband, Thomas the Stutterer, tried to carry her back to the cottage, but she screamed and threw her arms about, so there was nothing to do but mound up some clean straw for a bed and bring the midwife out to the field. Jane Sharp looked at the girl, settled the fee with Thomas, and rolled up her sleeves. She sent Beetle back to the cottage to pack a basket of necessaries. And don't drop or forget anything, you with the brains of a chicken, and don't dawdle. Not very encouraging words. Beetle grabbed bottles off the shelf and bunches of dried herbs from the ceiling beams, surprised at how much she knew, how she could recognize the syrups and powders and ointments and herbs from their look and their smell, since the midwife could not write to make labels, and Beetle would not have been able to read them even if she could. So even though the midwife can't write, she can't make labels, it wouldn't have mattered because Beetle can't read, but Beetle's she's a smart cookie. She's really good at um, memorizing things and recognizing things, so by the smells and by their look. So she's got talents in her own right. Kate was laboring in the field, not at plowing or sowing or weeding, but at making a way for her baby into the world. As Beetle watched, Jane moved Kate up onto her knees and shouted, Push, you cow! If... <laughs> It's not very nice. If an animal can do it, you can too. And Kate pushed as Jane the midwife eased the child out of his mother and into her hands. It put Beetle in the mind of the time she got the cat out of the bag. And she temporarily forgave the midwife for her sharpness, for the, ma for the magic of her spells and the miracle of her skill. So in other words, she's so in awe of how the midwife can help these mothers bring their little new babies into the world that in moments like that, She's like, okay, I can forgive her for how blunt and rude she can be and demanding, it sounds like. After that, Beetle took to watching through the windows when the midwife was called. In that way, she learned that midwifery, the act of being a midwife, was as much about hard work and good sense and comfrey tonic as spells and magic. So that is the end of our very short chapter three. I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.